early as we can. For some businesses, the engine is already revving. Everyone's really eager and excited to get back. Like, this is a huge part of their life. It's a huge part of my life. Gym owners like Mark Megna at Anatomy in Miami face a unique challenge, keeping up high standards for cleanliness while also maintaining social distancing guidelines. In a typical day, when you start to get to the afternoon hours, how many of these treadmills are usually filled up? On a typical day, they'll all be in use every day. And that can't happen now? No, not at the beginning. We have to take our time with this. The members at his gym will only be allowed to use every other treadmill or stationary bike. There's a rule, machine in between or six feet. And for beauty salons. Everything in this salon will be sanitized. Ready to start styling. Like Rick Rack in Miami, expect masks, spare chairs, and controlled capacity. The clients are far apart. We can take the chair away. Even doctor's offices deploying new tactics a fog sanitizer in rooms, and patients waiting in cars until it's their turn to be seen. Still no official start date yet for when gyms and fitness studios can open to the public. Some local facilities have made a plan now to keep their staff and members safe for when they do get the green light. Six on your sides, Kellyanne Stitz now has more on their procedures. Gyms and fitness facilities are a part of the phase one plan to reopen the economy. And while there has yet to be a set date for when they can reopen their doors, they are staying prepared for May 1st. Real Hot Yoga owner Cindy Coates has been teaching virtual yoga classes, but has a plan in place, taking extra precautions, preparing to welcome guests back. So we've always kept up a very, very high standard of cleanliness. Um, of course, that's going to get extended to between every single class and during every single class of disinfecting, you know, all of the surfaces. Letting for 30 minutes between each class to disinfect everything. They are also planning to limit class size from 45 to 15, giving members plenty of space by spreading out their mats. They also keep the air in their studio clean. So we have a filtration system um, where it passes over the course of about 25 feet, passes over this UV light, which removes 99.9% .9 of germs, bacteria, and virus from the air. It's constantly recirculating, recleaning the air all day long. The YMCA of East Tennessee has set new procedures for when they are able to welcome guests back, like maintaining social distancing. We'll only use every other piece of equipment and we'll rotate that equipment through the day so that we can have a deep clean of each piece. We always ask our members to clean equipment before and after their use, but we'll make sure we have paid staff also doing that just to keep everybody safe. And for fitness enthusiasts who prefer classes, we may move a class, we may hold it in a parking lot, we may hold it in a basketball gym so that we can, as much as we can, let as many people in but make sure they are adequately spaced apart. Reporting in Knoxville, Kellyanne Stitz, WATE 6 on your side. All right, Kellyanne, you have thank to you. Do for people to feel safe going back into a facility like a Planet Fitness where, I mean, if, if people are on bikes or on steel climbers, they're breathing hard. So you wonder about the, the impact of, of potential particles in the air, that they're touching free weights. Do they have to be wiped down between each person's use? What are the protocols that you're going to have in place that people are going to be wondering about? Yeah, great question. So uh, the cardiovascular is probably the first one because that one there, as we see, is usually very close together. Uh, we've seen, we've heard from some of the CEOs overseas, uh, 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 Asia in particular, who's already reopened. What they did is un unplug every other piece of cardio to help uh, that social distancing there. So um, we're working on protocols like that, if that's what the states recommend that we do. The strength equipment is a little different. It's pretty spacious as it is. Our gyms are 20,000 square feet, so there's a lot of room. Um, one thing, though, I'm very proud of is we've had sanitation in our stations scattered throughout our facilities for decades with cleaning solution and paper towels. And a lot of the industry doesn't do practice that. Restaurants, and, bars, know. and gyms to be opening back up. All right, so that's a kind of a timeline. Now, what are gyms going to look like post COVID-19 after all of this kind of dies down a little bit? They're gonna look different. So first things first, you know, most gyms are really good about cleanliness. They, um, you know, at least the gyms that I go to, they take pride in being clean. They have hand sanitizing stations. I think this is just gonna be amped up to the nth degree. You know, more hand sanitizing stations, probably a dedicated staff member that everybody's going to, the gyms are going to have to have to be cleaning basically at all times. Um, you know, hand sanitizing wipes that you're gonna be wiping equipment down. Again, things that most gyms are doing anyway, but I just think it's gonna be elevated, you know, up another notch. Another thing that I think probably will end up happening at least, at, 
in the beginning is something like maybe a temperature check before you come in. They have these temperature kind of guns that you know can just scan your forehead and see if you've got a temperature or not. And, and new data is just now coming out that that is a really good way to determine somebody that doesn't have symptoms if they are um, infected. So I don't think you're gonna be allowed in if you've got a temperature or maybe at very least the person checking you in at the front desk will ask you a series of questions. Have you experienced this symptom or that symptom or have you been sick or you know, different questions and then if you don't pass that questionnaire, you won't be allowed then to come into the gym. So some kind of a screening process, I think, in the beginning will have to happen before you will be allowed to go into the gym. So what is going to happen, again, in my opinion, once gyms start opening back up? Let's just say it's June 1st, they open back up the gyms. I think it's gonna be like January 1st, to be honest with you. I think gyms are going to explode. They've been shut down now for two months. The people that enjoy going to the gym and you know and want to go to the gym that haven't been able to they're going to be re really passionate about getting back in there and i think it's going to be like a january 1st kind of scenario you know all these people have kind of been sitting at home you know we've been just kind of bored and eating and not having the right amount of activity and i think gym memberships are going to really spike again just like january 1st maybe for a month or so and then everything will kind of die off you know it is going to be right in the beginning of summer which isn't a big uh, time for gym season most people are going out and kind of exercising but i do think we're going to see a spike i don't think we're going to see people avoiding the gyms um, you know just because they don't want to get infected so again, just my opinion on when gyms might open back up and what they're going to look like post.